so many critics, these pundits. Generally speaking, I'd be a fan of off the ball. Exactly. And like Tommy knows his football, obviously, listening to football at the odd time. And I was looking at the power rankings and I thought that Jesus almost still be feeling the effects of these mushrooms. But they just dismiss you like, you, you know, you have nothing to do with the bloody occasion. Shifty Lad says on YouTube, 413 watching but only one like, poor ratio. Come on, get your fingers out or are you all just uh, holding your likes in reserve until you see how Tommy's power rankings are doing for you today? Is that what's happening? Tommy, good morning to you. Good morning, Ger. You're going to bring the likes or the hates? I don't know. Well, I think it's quite telling that Shane hasn't said hello to me yet this morning. Oh, okay. Hello, Tommy. Shane, hard luck, fella. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I know Mick McCarthy last week spoke about the the hurt and the anger that you feel when your cardiac exits. I feel like a, a, a sort of form of depression. I don't know. The, I don't know if the name has been put on it yet, but a, a form of depression when your cardiac exits. There must be a German word for it. It has to be. Yeah. Surely some German speaker in the comments can come up with something for us. Yeah. Mm. What's the opposite of Schadenfreude? It's a it's a, de- it's a dark place. Yesterday was tough. Today has been tough as well. But uh, I think by by Wednesday Thursday maybe you get over it. And I, I, I don't know if this will make you feel better but I put it to Paddy Anders in the football pod last night that that Monaghan performance on Saturday evening would have beaten Dublin the Dublin side of 2021 and he reckons it would have doesn't make me feel any better we're still out we're out of, we're out of the championship but look it was a good run I'm not going to get too down, down Jesus down. Shane what a year Shane yeah, it's been brilliant what an year. unbelievable year like. nobody gave you hope yeah it's true nobody gave you hope of staying up in Division 1 nobody wanted a job <laughs> like nobody wanted the job well there were some people close to getting the job and they pulled out and then yeah. or they weren't given it and then who was left you were nearly going back to Banty again and Vinnie Corey steps up to the plate you had an ageing squad young players that probably hadn't been blooded through yet it was an unbelievable year from Monaghan and that is not patronising or condescending in any way and the performance on Saturday like they went for it like you couldn't be more proud of your county Oh, for sure, and, and like obviously, and then, like Mayo, what Mayo lost by twelve points to to Dublin in the previous round. So obviously, Manon will, will naturally, say, hey, naturally. Hey, 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 you know. Cool your jets, cool your jets, cool your jets. Let's do the let's do the the preliminaries. A, li- a little bit of foreplay, please. Come on. Well, there's only one mover this week, and it's Mighty Mead. So what what page they, are we on? Uh, we're skipping skipping page four. We, are we? We, How does this we work? Haven't now? Moved. I've, been, haven't moved I've been away for a page while. Four. You haven't you haven't screwed up the format on me, have you? Page four hasn't moved okay. in the last uh, three or four weeks. London thirty three, Waterford thirty two, Tip thirty one, New York thirty. New York not even moving. Uh, well, no, uh, no. All right, Leitrim twenty nine, no. Wicklow twenty eight, Wexford twenty seven, Carlow twenty six, yeah. Longford twenty five. This is the positions that they will all be in come the start of the league, unless one of them hires like I don't know, uh, Jimmy Gibbs with, with, comes with in from Anna or Limerick, from Anna Limerick, Leash twenty two, Offaly twenty one, Sligo twenty, Antrim nineteen, Cavan eighteen, Down seventeen. You mentioned Jim McGuinness down seventeenth. Who's in sixteenth, lads? Meath plus one. The top sixteen Mighty. counties. Now uh, Meath. Mighty Meath. Meath behind Louth. That, that's not supposed to be Leash in fourteen, by the way. That's a typo. Don't know who that's supposed to be, but it ain't Leash. It's supposed, it's supposed to be Louth. Yeah. So it's supposed to be Louth. Meath behind Louth. Yeah, just because we get to build our stadium and Louth don't doesn't mean that we get to jump them in the oh, our rank. Because Louth have had a better. That's Loud the most have had niche. A better season. That's the most niche negging that's ever happened on the show. <laughs> 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 poor loud. Oh, you got uh, a little bit of stadium envy, have you, loud? <laughs> loud, poor now. Loud deserved their stadium now. I don't know what the GA are at. I think they're afraid of getting burned again with with Cork and Mayo, obviously. So hopefully, loud get that sorted because uh, the good people of loud deserve a stadium. Um, oh, patronised by me twice in ten seconds there, Tommy. That's amazing behaviour. Well done. Come here. Well, I would uh, say, I would say, like it was an awful long time for a Mead man to stand up there and lift the trophy and be able to celebrate it. You know, without any real complaints. You're talking over 20 years. 1999 is probably the last time we'd lifted a trophy in Crow Park. And I don't even think anyone... In, well, I'd be right in saying in 1999, Graham Gerdy couldn't even walk up the steps of Hogan stand. The presentation was on the pitch. Uh, you're obviously not counting... The I show, know I am. I Josh, am counting. Joe Sheridan, again, uh, negging am, out just for the sake of us. I am, of course, counting it. But I mean, do you know, it was a, it was a funny time back in 2010. So... Uh, like as a Mead fan all you could hope for is that you could you could get what Monaghan have had over the last decade and that's all I'd say that over the next decade Mead get a period as um, as successful as Monaghan had over the last little while with provincial success and being competitive in uh, Division 1 and 
getting as far as they have done um, in an All Ireland semi final. So, been a long time coming for Mead, and uh, I would argue that down probably put in their worst performance of the year to date at the weekend mm. um, Sean Brennan made an unbelievable save at a really key moment before half time Mead got a really fortuitous goal but Ronan Jones was in the right place at the right time when the ball came back off the post we've often complimented the dubs for being there to flick in dropping balls as they came in short um, and in the second half Mead just grew in confidence and I'll tell you one thing um, a Mead team in, with confidence is a dangerous thing as long as it's not an inflated sense of confidence that is a uh, untrue so hopefully it's a really really positive couple of months in Mead they have a fantastic team holiday and they continue to build and grow but I'm leaving them in the 16th year it was a secondary competition when you watched the Derry Kerry game in particular the next day to me it felt like different sports different grades um, so there's a long way to go for Mead to grow and hopefully it'll come from this and I think Down, Down will get a bounce out of it as well I think both of them will, will get a big bounce out of it in 2024 um, I, we were having a little bit of this conversation with Moisey yesterday but it does seem a little bit ridiculous that a team from Division 2 can be in the secondary competition because they've just won it like it's you know it's supposed to be a competition for teams who aren't going to be competitive in the top tier and yet here because of the convoluted nonsensical nature of the provincial championships the finalists automatically being in the Sam Maguire competition we actually had an imbalance and I, mm. I think uh, you know, listening to one of the Sligo players, it was Morris Brosnan's piece. Like, I've forgotten which of the Sligo players was was saying. Like the manager literally told us before we played the Dublin game that we didn't have a chance of winning, and that uh, was just difficult for us to compute. But it was true. So there shouldn't be a competition where Sligo are playing a game where they don't have a chance of winning because that's actually not helping them. Now, this is yeah. this is you know uh, this is not me's fault, but in a way, right? I was asking. Did Meath have end up having a better year than Louth or Kildare? I like like Meath bet Meath lost to Offaly in the championship and then to win the Talton Cup they bet Tipperary they bet Waterford who were very low in the power rankings they bet down in a game where down kicked 17 wide and Meath were lucky to get over the line again that day uh, their quarter final win was against Wexford they kicked 223 on a sunny day in Navan to beat them they hockeyed them then they got by Antrim in Crow Park but they were 9 points up at Antrim with 10 minutes to go they won that game by 2 and then there's a shootout with Down I would argue that Mead were the third best team in the Tatchin Cup on paper going into this in terms of confidence Mead were far lower down I did not expect Mead to turn this around in the manner which they did However, the thing about the Tatchin Cup though Ger, the thing about the Tatchin Cup like there's two grades in the Tatchin Cup there's an intermediate grade and a junior grade and regardless I think of even even if you didn't have that quirk with the Division 2 teams, and I don't agree that it should be like that, I think there still would be a gulf in the Talchin Cup. And the same with the, the All-Ireland. Like, Sligo put in two good performances before that Dublin game. Like, they're, 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 that format is closer to something working than we've ever had. I agree. I still think... I, I, I was the one making the case that that was the greatest day of Gaelic football that we've seen in you two were. decades and I, I would you stand were. over that I, I still think though that like if Sligo had won the Talton Cup this year they would feel better about themselves at the end of the season than they do at the end of the season having been hockey by Dublin in their last game yeah well they'd have that team holiday and that is so important mm. Like, I'm serious yeah I, I would agree with you and I actually think if there was a, to, to your point about there being a third tier maybe there should be a third tier where after the group stages the, the bottom teams also get the extra month of football and then the winners of that end up getting a team holiday as well like maybe it just yeah. comes from the, the bottom 16 and the bottom 8 they go into a playoff and then somebody ends up again with the, the end of the year and the game in Croke Park and that could be a double header in the August bank holiday weekend there was a fairly obvious bank holiday Monday finish the season opportunity open to them that yeah. they haven't taken maybe yeah. they'll take it next year and, and look this is right. the first year of it you're right look and, and I'd be very reluctant at the moment until we kind of figure this all out to create any new uh, GA competitions especially when the Sigerson Cup is under pressure the Rayward Cup has disappeared so I wouldn't be going creating a third four playoff as one of our esteemed colleagues suggested on Twitter Adrian Barry while he's on holidays during the week but perhaps a shield for the Talchon Cup yeah. like without you know maybe we don't need a junior grade but maybe after the quarter final stage if you're out you go into a shield and there's a three two knockout games and like lads aren't going to be going to America I don't think at that stage anyway I think they have to well, I suppose they probably would but play it off quickly get it done quickly are you not just throwing is that not just throwing trophies around everywhere or like, well, I don't know right about throwing trophies Shane like, I, I think it's like I do think what we have at the minute is 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 is, is getting to where we need to get to and mm -hmm. I think 
Derry are going to treat Ulster very differently next year. I think we'll see that next year. They're going to they're going to treat the provincial championships differently because Derry are going to feel like they can win the All Ireland. That's that's, and they're going to have to sit down and say, well, can we attack the league the way we did this year in Division Two? They don't need to. Do we attack Ulster the way we have done? We've won two in a row, so they're going to probably approach it the way Derry, sorry, Dublin and Kerry did this year, in the sense that they probably timed the run for to be flying when it got to the quarterfinal stage. Derry have been flying for weeks and probably ran out of gas late on. I just think that the Tatchin Cup team's there. There is a massive gulf. Give them something to play for. Make it over a week, maybe. Two games. Uh, maybe you get a bounce. Maybe you get a bit more um, a bit more cohesiveness together. We don't want to see teams being hockeyed. In fairness, though, at the same time, Jer, like I'm probably talking myself out of a shame, probably to the point. Some teams just have bad years, and they yeah, just want the end enough. as well. Fair enough, fair enough. I, and I get that. And, and for whatever reason, that that is going to be the case. But the, it should happen less and less as as players demand better standards, as management teams improve, as um, as the money flows, as we know, because the money talks. Let's keep going. Come on, what else have we got? Uh, so mid sixteenth. Clare have remained in 15th, Louder in 14th, Westmead 13th, Clare 12th, Donegal 11th, Roscommon 10th, Cork 9th. A lot of these teams will feel like it's been harsh on them being back that far. Tyrone are 8th, Galway are 7th, who lost in the preliminary round. Armagh are 6th. Monaghan have remained in 5th, Mayo have remained in 4th, the league champions. Derry have remained in 3rd, Dublin have remained in 2nd. Kerry will remain in first before Le- Shane loses his shit I do think that Kerry Dublin and Derry um, are on their own in this tier I think Kerry Dublin and Derry looked like and felt like they could win the All-Ireland at the weekend um, Monaghan were unbelievable but Monaghan got one shot off in the last 18 minutes of play can I can I just ask a question in the power rankings the order of the power ranking suggests that if you're ahead of one team, you're going to beat them. Correct? No. Yes. Not necessarily. Yes. Not always. Not, uh, no, teams can beat others. Teams can come from behind to beat others. Like, we had this argument a couple of weeks ago. In the power rankings in 2020, where were Tipperary and Calvin have been when they got to the All-Ireland semi-finals? They wouldn't have been in third and fourth. Uh, for that week? They weren't for that one glorious week. It's like it's like that um, scene in Shawshank. Rankings. It's like the scene in Shawshank where they're they're drinking a few beers on the roof. Everything feels possible. I and mean, obviously, in the power rankings, the guards are still battering the shit out of them. You're still like you know scared of what, what's going to happen in the jacks, uh, in the showers. But no, for this one moment, Calvin were third and Tipperary were fourth. It was also a different yeah. year. They went straight from the provinces to the semi-finals. Yeah. So like. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and it's not, it's not an, uh, there's not an equivalence there, of course. And I'm not saying that Monaghan are anywhere f- as far as away being where Tipperary and Calvin were in 2020. But I'm just making that point. Like the power rankings aren't meant to be a predictions model. They aren't meant to be something for the bookies to lean on when they're making their shouts before the game and they're setting their prices. The power rankings, they aren't meant to be handouts or like the old FEI grants were back in the day, where you could just apply and get whatever you wanted. Like this isn't what the power rankings is about. The power rankings is meant to represent the teams that are closest to winning the All-Ireland they're and right. I just don't think Monaghan were going to win the All-Ireland they're a piss take like, if Monaghan had got over the line like there were two, it was two points in it on 68 minutes if they'd got over the line and granted Dublin's strength came through and they pushed those kickouts in those last five minutes of injury time whatever else but it, like if that game had gone the other way and it could easily have gone the other way like Monaghan would be All-Ireland contenders because they'd, be they'd be in a final against Derry or Kerry Kerry as it turned out like how could they not have been all our, all our contender? Like they, they were much closer to Dublin than Mayo were the previous week. They beat Mayo in the last round of the league, Monaghan as well in Castle Bar. So like, yeah, what did they have to change? Change, 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 change? Yeah, I know. Uh, the game meant nothing. I know the game meant nothing. Hold on a second. They still be a strong Mayo. Whatever way you want, Shin. You can paint it whatever you want. Like the the re, the re, it's re, the realistic situation here is go away and Mayo screwed up in the last round of the round. They round. did, yeah. They screwed up. Go away and Mayo screwed up. You're telling me that a Galway side or a Mayo side who had came through the round robin say just top of their group wouldn't be different. Wouldn't have been a different quarterfinal. Uh, Kerry were screwed if that happened. The grand like that, like, wheels. Like, Kerry, Kerry weren't screwed. Kerry screwed up. No, well, sorry. If Kerry, Kerry were screwed if they finished second or third. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Turns out Kerry are really good. Kerry screwed up by periodizing wrong for the first round of the round robin and were unprepared for what Mayo were going to throw at them. But it turns out Mayo 
are all for a coat and no knickers. That's what this was. This was a, a stereotypical souffle of mayo, where as soon as something punctured them, they're like, Wah! and all the air came out of them. This was like an all-time great mayo swoon this year, and they, they deserve no credit for winning a league where there was a, a week between the end of the league and the league final, and then the next week they had to play a, a championship match, and they couldn't get up for the championship match against Ross Common. I'm sorry, but like all of Mayo's worst failings re-emerged this year, including us falling for them and and being romantically uh, attached to them and stupidly going, oh, we still love you, Mayo. You're amazing. Look at you. You're great. We love your colour and we love your fans. And it's so, oh, you've got the best songs, and at least you, your fans sing properly. No. We, 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 we need to punish ourselves for this, Tommy. I'd, I'd be taking Mayo off the whole, whole front page. I think Monaghan will beat Mayo if they played tomorrow. I think Monaghan will beat Mayo eight times out of ten if they played at the moment with the current teams. I think if Kildare, if Kildare had beaten Monaghan that day in Tullamore, which, by the way, they very well could have done and probably should have done. <laughs> Don't I, dare I, say Kildare before. No, 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 hold on. If Kildare beat Monaghan that day, which they easily could have done, and then they'd gone on to beat Armagh on penalties the exact same way Monaghan did, and then push the dubs the way the Monaghan did last weekend, I would also be making the argument that Kildare should be in the top four of the power rankings. And there wouldn't be a hope in hell that Kildare would be near the top four in the power rankings. There wouldn't be a hope in hell. It would, what more can a team do than what they do? There wouldn't I, be I think you're uh, damaging your own argument here, Shane. <laughs> no, but, you know, if a, t- if a Shane, team... Shane, there wouldn't be... Shane, if, 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 if Kildare had... When a last, if Kevin Feely's last-minute free sent Kildare through against Monaghan and they squeaked over the line against Armagh on penalties and they went down fighting like they did against the Dubs twice this year when they lost by a point in the league and a point in Leinster there isn't a hope in hell Kildare would be fourth in the power rankings right forget there that argument I, I'm not I'm not arguing for Kildare no. I'm not going to die in that sword I'm dying on the Monaghan sword here okay. he's right about Monaghan if I if I could avoid having Mayo Ford, I would. Can you put? Can you get 2005 out of your head, Tommy? When Paul Finley scored that goal and Mark Ward pounded it into his own net, like, are you not over it by now? It's 18 years ago. Like you said, you admitted yourself you have Monaghan lower in the rankings because of the pain you felt and the slagging you got in Colosh Doriel that those days. And I'm sure it was tough. Skull rush and Carrot McGross. Oh, sorry, skull rush. I was in I, primary school. I, 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 I didn't. I didn't admit that. It was tough. I didn't admit that. Uh, but the power rankings have never been coloured by anything like that. I just. I'm just. I'm trying to be fair here. I think, that's just how I see it. I think you are overrating Mayo. I'd say you're correct in that there's there's a second tier. Like, but how are Mayo ahead of Galway? If Galway, if sorry, if Galway were in fourth and Monaghan were in fifth, I, I, my my argument will be less strong. I think Galway are the fourth best team in the country. I can't manipulate the power rankings any more than I have them. Galway are the fourth best team in the country. They are like they just messed up against our man. So, but you've got them at seventh. <laughs> but Mayo, but Mayo bet-, bet them. Mayo bet them. Like, like, there, there is a course that happens here Mayo won okay. the league okay do you know like okay. Mayo next year Mayo next year are going to be closer to the All-Ireland than Monaghan will be okay so we should, we should move on you've got Kerry 1 and Dublin 2 Kerry are going to win the All-Ireland according to the power rankings um, I've according to the power rankings Kerry Kerry have done very little wrong all year long according to the power rankings Kerry have nearly always retained first place there was a two week sojourn where Galway overtook them so if you want to make your call off the back of the power rankings do that I know where I'd be leaning at the moment and I think I think Dublin are primed to win the All-Ireland uh, uh, they make them number one in their power rankings but they're not like they're not number one in the power rankings I just think that at the minute, I, I'm going to change over the next couple of weeks. I, I'm not. I'm not putting them number one in the power rankings. I but mean, like, I'm allowed to say I, I, a plucky underdog can win. Like I, I had Mead seventeenth, <laughs> and I thought that the plucky underdogs of Mead might be down in the back of my heart. I just think that Dublin have, as you called it months ago, our timing has run perfectly. Um, the only problem is, and I made a very clunky analogy like this on on the show last night. I heard you say on Monday that it was like the last dance. Yeah. The only problem is Michael Jordan's playing with the opposition. I mean, you know, uh, which which era Jordan is it? Uh, it, it look, it's true. Oh, it's However, they always came up against they always came up against good teams. You know, uh, he I know, but like your man is the greatest player we've ever seen. I think it's it's undeniable now. The the bit in the second half where a ball got kicked in and uh, it got kind of it was a kind of aimless. Mm lazy tired ball in 
and he just turned around and started screaming at them all. They were like, oh, that's going to be interesting. The next, the next yeah, few balls I, were, they found him I properly. Kind of, I kind of worried about that one. That reminded me of Con in 2021 against Mayo. And it was the first time I really see the dub start balling each other out of it on the pitch that day. And it looked like things were falling apart. And for what it's worth, Dublin bit Monaghan in 15 seconds. It was after Began's kick out when Fenton put them ahead. Dublin bet Monaghan in the next 15 seconds. Dublin switched it on. They they ate Monaghan alive. Paddy Small showed Ryan Wiley the sideline. He turned him back. Wiley got swallowed up by Gannon, Small and Costello. He threw it back to O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon gets tracked by three. He throws it back to Began. Mannion and Kong close down Began. Costello and Small are coming the other end. Began throws it to O'Hanlon and touches on the ground. Mannion nails that free. They go two points up. They turn over Began's next kick out. They go three points up. They only turned over Rory Began three times in that game and twice was in that two-minute period. So D- Dublin put the squeeze on and they won that game. Monaghan got one more shot off and that was Jack McCarron's in the 66 minutes. Derry, Derry had the chances to win this game. Derry had the opportunities. Like I, I don't think Monaghan left anything else out there. Like Monaghan didn't miss much. McInesby's chance, maybe, he could have squared it. But Mick Fitz did unbelievably well. Derry butchered chance after chance in that game. But when Kerry switched it on like Dublin did, between the 60, was it 65? 65-40 on the clock when Clifford scored or O'Shea converted that free that O'Brien got, that phantom free that Joe McQuillan gave. Three minutes later, Kerry scored their four points in a row to go two points up. Like, we just saw two unbelievable teams switch it on can when I, it mattered most. Can and I, it's going to be an unbelievable all Ireland final. Can I take you back to the first half, though, where uh, Began does hit a post? And to your point earlier about Ronan Jones being in the right place, nobody follows that in. Um, there's also there's also a couple of goal chances that didn't look like goal chances, but suddenly became goal chances because there was an angled run uh, through that pocket of space on the right hand side of Dublin's defence from the left wing. And uh, it feels like that Kerry half back line will be able to do what they did for the goal. That they'll be able to run at pace. And I don't know why Kerry didn't do a bit more of that against um, Derry, but maybe that was just because Derry were too busy celebrating the goal. I, I do think that in that first half, Dublin were very, very passive. And in the first half last year against Kerry, they should have been out of sight. But for Evan Comerford's heroics and gamesmanship, that penalty would have been scored and that would have been game over like, there would have been no coming back from would it have been a nine point lead for Kerry at that stage seven it seven. Could have been seven and a half time yeah. they went in seven and a half time did they no it could have been seven could have been seven. Half time. right yeah. but been I seven. think the, 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 the ebb and flow of the game was such that they were so dominant so I, I, I can definitely see a pathway for Kerry to come out and put together their full complete performance for 70 minutes notwithstanding that I still think the Dublin are going to win because uh, they're a better team than they were last year by a significant amount more than Kerry are a better team mm, I, I do think Kerry have improved I, it's hard to measure how much winning on an All- an All-Ireland gives you like I watched back the 2019 match last night the replay and Dublin looked like a team they were about to win five in a row Kerry looked like a bunch of kids and David Moore in the middle of the field like that's that's how it looked Kerry dropped in I think five long balls short um, they, they hit in five long balls in the first 10 minutes of the match while Mannion, Conn and Kilkenny each scored a pair of points each from play like Gary Gary's tactics were all wrong that day whatever went on um, Dublin lost last year by points without Stephen Cluxton Paul Mannion Jack McCaffrey Con O'Callaghan their new water boy Pat Gilroy like Dublin have really like even pa- Colin Baskell who had a quiet day the last day it's going to suit him I think playing against Dublin Monaghan shut him down so well it's going to suit him playing against Kerry like it's going to be a titanic clash I'm going to be flip-flopping between who I think will win it over the next couple of next two weeks I just think after the weekend I just sat there thinking that how, how are Kerry going to stop the Dubs like so especially if like um, if Fenton plays the way he played against Monaghan in the well certainly in the second half like he was unbelievable yeah, and then the, the one thing is like a lot of the scores were coming from Costello in the first half maybe all but one yeah. I, I'm not going to say Dublin are, are over aligned on Costello for the scoring because obviously other lads chipped in in the second half but they're going to need they're going to need others to, to step up and, and, and chip in in the scoring and look they have a forward line capable of it they probably a few of them had an off day against Monaghan and I'm not saying Dublin were, were, were at their best because they certainly weren't Um but, but that's one area maybe Kerry can exploit yeah I think both sides probably suffered that a little bit in, in different ways I actually think the Monaghan defenders shut down um, Kerry's or Dublin's forwards incredibly well 
you could just see, I, like I couldn't figure it out, and even chatting on the football pod last night, couldn't properly figure out what impact Stephen O'Brien made coming off the bench at half time because you're sitting there thinking, Paul Ganey hasn't got a shot off in anger, hadn't got a shot at all. He'd been involved in, in two goal chances and involved in the goal. Shawnee O'Shea had the assist for Gavin White, hadn't got a shot off. He was even being marked by Conor Doherty now at this stage, even though Padre McGorgan had initially been set to mark him. So O'Shea wasn't in the game. And next thing Stephen O'Brien comes on, he gets two turnovers in the first couple of minutes. Um, he blocks a shot. Shawnee O'Shea kicks a superb point under pressure from play and he's in the match. Like, Conor Callaghan in the second half, I think he was blessed with that first point, Shane. I actually think Monaghan got screwed. Conor Callaghan took steps. Like, mm. he got away with it. He'd been called for steps a few minutes beforehand his first point uh, off the left takes about 10 steps and like sometimes I'd often be happy to give the forward the benefit of the doubt if he's scoring a goal or if he's going through but for a point I think Khan should have been called for that but like Khan got into that game and Khan had a big influence in that second half I do think that it's going to be a game for the forwards um, All right. in the all the final alright that's uh, so we're going to have one more power rankings before it are we is that what you're saying no ah, no 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 we might we might make a couple of corrections after the All-Ireland final if there's any egregious errors but uh, I don't think there are and it's, there's nothing personal Shane I, I, oh no of course no listen I, 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 I see the head in you there and I, I do apologise and I hope that this doesn't affect our relationship going forward not but at all it's a tough job I know you have a tough job ahead of you you know and like look, I we, didn't get up on a Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock to have an argument here I didn't get up to upset you man I prefer being underdogs anyway Tommy so starting fifth next year is, is maybe not the worst thing you know yeah I can cut the the Tension with a, an eye fair. You're a long way ahead of me, Jane. I put it that way. It's true. I do love you, Tommy, still, you know. Yeah, you too, Paul. Depending on whether or not to leave a word in there or <laughs> take it out. Anyway, that's this week's, and the, maybe the final one ever, potentially, of the power rankings. Tommy knows his football, obviously, listening to football pod the odd time. And I was looking at the power rankings and I thought that Jesus' own must still be feeling the effects of these mushrooms.